Welcome to this aftermath video. Norris is so much faster than what he was at the start of the year. Look at this. This is from F1 guy Dan, 48 seconds behind Max Verstappen at the first race of the year. 22, almost 23 seconds ahead of Max Verstappen. Crazy turnaround from McLaren and crazy turnaround from Norris. He is on it. Although this face right here is about how he feels. Uh, he looked not happy during post-race celebrations. In fact, the camera guys were calling him out and he was having to put on a face. There's a couple pictures of him smiling with the trophy and that was all media stuff. He, I think he was still kicking himself. And we see this from Norris. He's very hard on himself, like overly hard on himself. I can't remember anybody Aside from maybe Lewis, uh, we saw Lewis be very hard on himself and kind of get down bad on, on, and it really did affect his race. And it just goes to show that a lot of this, uh, a lot of this racing is mentally, it's up in your head as well as physically and ability um, constrained. But Norris does it when he's doing well. <laughs> he won the race, he had pole and he had the fastest lap, triple, triple crown right there like you, those are things that you just not many people do and he did it but he was really upset about losing the lead on turn one i think he would have been more happy if he led on turn one and then lost it in the last uh the last corner or something like that of the last lap anyway let's take a look at this it is a breakdown of norris versus max championship so the constructors championship in this simulation would be tied up completely and we think that mclaren's going to pass red bull anyway despite on um, what happens with the driver's championship the final driver score would be 483 and 478 and this is if norris wins every race every fastest lap and the sprints for the rest of the year while max comes second in all of those categories lando norris will win so right now currently all Lando has to do is have a perfect drive the rest of the year. And it's not unlikely. We've seen Vettel come back very hard. Uh, I think uh, and and Andreas Seidel said, uh, uh, referenced Vettel's, uh, was it the 2013 or 2014 drive that he came back by a, a lot of points? Not as many as it is right now, but we do have those sprints where we didn't have uh, then. And we've also seen a couple other times Senna has come back from a lot of points. Again, that's a different kind of uh, F1 racing that we've seen in recent times. Those cars were highly unreliable. All we need is one max crash, car blow up, really, really poor pit stop, a, a, a cross-threaded wheel nut like we saw Botas have, or a really bad pit stop where your tire comes off. Anything, anything at all, and Max is in deep, deep trouble and we saw that from uh, some of the responses uh, from Max during the weekend and we even had Brundle come out and say that he was putting the slowdown on his car in order to exacerbate that uh, that loss that he had uh, to Norris he didn't think Charles Leclerc was going to catch him because he was about six seconds behind or so throughout the whole uh, latter part of the race and that he was just matching that speed in order to show that how far ahead McLaren was and maybe give them a, the hurry up for the rest of the year because he does want to win but this is the breakdown now there is a note on here this is formula data analysis this is who I go to for pretty much everything there's a note on here about Hamilton and Russell they put the red tires on at the very end there so their strategy was kind of a little bit out and that's why it's so wide there they're very slow on the hards very fast on the on the softs so they're a, a bit out of sync when this data comes up like this but you can see how far ahead Norris is and you the the difference for me aside from who is this Hulkenberg man just lap after lap at the same time he had that that tightness there is his average lap time in there is pretty friggin good so the outliers on there ghastly very slow you see how slow those uh alpines are but look how tight those uh cars are at the front max and norris all putting in really really good laps and i, I think the biggest tell here is is how far behind perez is as far as places go but only really two tenths a little under two tenths from max but so far back in the points just from having that two tenths. And this really is a very tiny track, so two tenths means a lot. And what that means is three tenths, almost four tenths from Norris to uh, Verstappen is a metric amount. And we see his notes as well, Bahrain, that's their, Verstappen is 0.83 of a second quicker on average. 
and at Zandvoort Norris is 0.34. So you're looking at more than a second net gain in overall pace throughout a race, which is pretty crazy. Even I have a hard time believing that because the McLaren wasn't horribly slow last year or even horribly slow this year at the first of the race but their pace has just become insane over the last little bit. Okay, so the next thing up is the Schumacher Lawson possibly to Williams. So Logan Sargent is out next year. He is moving on to possibly better things for him. He's not going to be there next year, so I don't I, I don't know what his wage is. I would suggest it's probably between 1 and 2 million. Logan doesn't have 3 million dollars <laughs> cuz he's He's jumped up here. This is the Deconstructors Championship. They were able to salvage the monocoque and the electronics. So $1.7 million that crash was worth uh, from Logan Sargent, which is, for Williams, not a small amount of money. When you crash out and you cause more damage to the car than they're going to be paying you, I feel like that is probably not something you want to do. And we saw that Alex Albon had uh, crashed out early on in the year. I don't know if it was Aust Australia or Japan, but and then they loaned Logan Sargent's car to him and he couldn't run. So Williams is having a bad year when it comes to uh, crashes. And you saw that the other uh, the year with Mick Schumacher lost his drive. They were also having a bad year. It was it was pretty terrible. And we'll get on to that because I think that's going to be a big factor for Williams. They want to try to save as much money as they can this year so they can dump it into some of their development. And they have been developing very hard. What Logan did there is really going to make them question, okay, do we put somebody who is going to be a little bit more reliable in the car? And the people that are the names are being thrown around are kind of weird to me schumacher who has won the deconstructors championship in previous years because of all the crashes he's had is not a guy that i would put in the car if i'm looking to save money now is he a better driver than sergeant i would probably say so i can't think of any drivers who haven't maybe zhao is a little bit worse than sergeant in equal equipment possibly I'm not sure though. I think Sargent's pretty much up there with uh, the goat, Gotifi. Uh, I, I don't think there's anybody on the grid that would be worse as far as results go. As far as crashing now with that crash, one more of those, and it's really going to be hard times for Williams to try to get enough cars back out there. I imagine at the first of the year they were low on chassis. I can only imagine that they that the that they're low on chassis again because I, while they race that chassis i suspect that they will have a further inspection between now and monza and realize that it's cracked because that was a huge huge accident where you would expect the monocoque to actually be crashed at some point uh, cracked at some point in time so schumacher and lawson so lawson would be on loan from Red Bull, and I think that says a lot. Now, keep in mind, this is from Marco, so who knows, but uh, would be on loan from Red Bull, and I think that says a lot about what their decisions are going to be made for next year for RB or Red Bull. I think maybe all of the drivers will hold station as to where they are from this year. Have Liam Lawson be on loan for the end of this year, and then that'll be kind of a makeup for not giving a drive for next year? Not really, but at least they can say he's still with the team and it might be a bar bargaining chip in order to try and uh, keep him as a third test driver for longer. Because it, is, it does make a lot of sense to have him as a third test driver. He is still young. He could still play Sergio Perez for 2026 or Yuki or uh, Daniel for 2026 as well. Because I, I think 2026 is where, where we're going to see a lot of mix up there. So they want to uh, hang on to him. He is a good driver. And he sh has shown in the past that he can drive quite well. But he's in the same camp as Mick Schumacher. It's not a guy I would put in the car if I want to have zero accidents for the rest of the year. And have good data uh, on how to develop the car. As well, Mick Schumacher is notoriously slow for getting to grips with a car. Uh, he won F2 his second year, his first year, so slow. He was slow, slow. I'm talking like in the teens finishes in F2. And he's an, a, an immensely quick driver. Now, they have said in the pre previous years that he's actually really good at development and good in a sim, but you don't need a guy to be in a car to do that. He can do sim work all on his own if they wanted to uh, 
purchase him as a test driver. So those aren't the guys that I would put in the car, but that seems to be what's going on. You can see uh, Sergeant here uh, having his car burnt to the ground as well. I would say that a lot of this was down to the race marshals who were slow to come out on the track for the uh, fire. In previous years, you'd seen Vettel, uh, Daniel, ooh, who else? Carlos, I think. I'll jump out, grab an extinguisher from a marshal, because technically, unless the marshals aren't cleared, they're not allowed to go on track and fight the fire, but you've seen drivers get out and try to fight that fire because they valued what's in the car, not just um, getting away from the incident. But he was online, so I guess I won't say anything about that. So that's the Deconstructors Championship, quite high uh, for Sergeant. He passed... He was kind of hanging around down here in no man's land as far as uh, how much he's cost the team, which is kind of like expected. I would say like 50% of the drivers are between 750,000 and 2 million. They're all, or even less than that, 1.5 million. They're all kind of hanging around here. Your Lance Trolls, Daniels. You're going to have incidents throughout the year. This is where most people are. The other thing up here is Haas, who previously forgot for somehow uh, to pay Urakali for their uh, sponsorship that they cancelled in 2022. Uh, this is when all that Russian stuff was happening, and they cancelled both Mazepin and Urakali, who are both Russian backed. Uh, but Urakali had already paid them uh, money for that year, so what ended up happening is they still owed them two cars and $9 million. Why it took them two years to pay that back when as soon as they threatened to go to the Dutch government and freeze their cars, then they suddenly had $9 million. <laughs> I thought that was a bit shady and a bit embarrassing, to be honest, for an American-backed team. And it's a bit embarrassing to have to pay out to the Russians. If I had to take a wild guess, I would have expected that they were hoping that the Russian war with Ukraine went even worse and that Urakali would be dissolved by the government, which has happened in the past necessarily in Russia, but it is a communist uh, uh, leaning history of a country, so you never know. What ended up happening is they paid on Friday, and apparently there was a bank problem in transferring the money, and it never got there, but the Dutch government still worked over the weekend and was able to uh, substantiate their claims of not being paid and were freezing the cars. So. What ends up happening is Monday morning rolls around, the money still hasn't arrived, and the cars are not allowed to leave the Dutch border. And the drive from the Dutch Grand Prix down, down to Monza, keep in mind they drive these cars, is about 17 hours. So if you leave Monday morning, you get there much after dark time on Monday. And you really, to set up your garage, get the cars all ready, get everything out, takes about 24 hours. And then you're into really trying to have meetings and stuff and things aren't set up and, and, and they'll be a little bit late. So I still think they'll be a little bit late. The money did go through, as reported by Chris Midland here. Uh, the last thing I thought was pretty funny here was this is Inspector Alonzo. <laughs> and you can see him here looking at the back of the McLaren pretty heavily. Like he is down on the ground <laughs> looking at that rear diffuser. Very interesting, and this reminded me of Inspector Seb from previous years. Uh, this is 2018 of the Russian Grand Prix rolling the Mercedes to see rolling resistance there. See the graining in the tires? <laughs> and then he goes over to his car and does the same thing, looking at how the tires have been affected. <laughs> and Seb is actually known for this. He's done a lot of inspecting um, over the years, which I, I thought was really funny. He actually had touched a couple cars years ago, uh, which was pretty funny. Uh, but that's what that Alonzo thing reminded me of. Not too much else to report other than the overall uh, displeasure from the Verstappen camp. I think Yoss has been on Dutch media complaining about it again. He really does want to see Max jump ship. Or at least have a lot of bargaining chips for more money. Or I don't know what else Max could possibly want for Red Bull. They give him everything. But uh, not too much else coming out there. So, looking forward to Monza. It should be a very interesting weekend. I love Monza. It's one of my favorite tracks. Super fast. We should expect to see the um, Ferraris be very good because in a straight line, those Ferraris are pretty good as long as they have their bouncing under control. Aside from that, subscribe if you're new, throw me a like if you got a second, and I'll see you guys next time.